Hi there guys and welcome back to the channel, Machining with Joe. So in the last video we made a good start to the carriage stop for the Harrison M300 and in today's video it's time to get this thing finished. So to begin with then I need to finish off cutting this 70 degree V angle into the block and to do so I'm just going to use these 3D printed gauges to set this to there about the angle we need. And with that now set and start hogging out some of this material, we have a nice chunky end mill. Coming to the end of the machining then I can do with this big chunky end mill, it was time to drop down a size. And with that I also had to drop down the feed rate and also the depth of cut. So just doing a bit of side milling here now then to finish off this process before having the first look at how the V-block fits onto the ways of the lathe. Ooh, that is a nice finish. Shiny. Placing the V-block onto the ways of the lathe then, and I'm really happy of how that's turned out. Quite a nice fit for my first time doing a V-block like this. Moving on to some of the hole features then, which will help locate this top and bottom section of the block. It's really important that I get these as super accurate and as close to the drawings as possible. So for that reason you can see me here using the old trusty hamer gauge. And once we've got a nice zero position, I can begin by drilling these holes out and then following up with a reamer. So it's quite interesting using this mill for the first time just seeing how it actually performs with the drilling operation. With the old mill it used to be really easy to drill stuff because of the geared head. Loads of torque there. But actually this mill handles drilling really easily and because of the variable speed it's really easy to adjust for these smaller drill bits and then slow the mill down when stepping up to this larger drill here. With those holes now drilled, I can come in with a reamer and oil this beast up and send it on its way. Got to admit, the more I do reaming, the more I like it. With that hole now done, we've got a really nice fit. That is lovely. Moving on then, we can start work on the lower part of the carriage stop. And to do so, we're going to be doing the same again, drilling and reaming procedure to make sure these holes perfectly align and the two blocks marry up. With the reaming all done then, you can see these pins fit in lovely and the top part of the block locates on there. That's really good because that's sort of the major part of this done, which could have really screwed up this project. Moving on to the next hole feature then, and we're going to need a way of tightening down this carriage stop when it's in operation. So you can see here I'm just drilling out a through hole into the top section of this block. This is going to allow an M8 stud to come through. And then moving on to the bottom section, this is actually going to be drilled and tapped to accept that stud. So that will be permanently fixed in there. So with that drilled, just tapping it out. And with that tapped, this is all done. Blowy blowy. If you're still watching this video and you haven't already subscribed, please consider subscribing to the channel. It's shocking to think only 10.4% of you are actually subscribed, so do Machining with Joe a favour and subscribe. With that being said, let's jump straight back into this video. So next we can start by hogging out some of this steel with this roughing end mill. This is going to make way for this lower part of the block to actually form a more of a foot section so we can go underneath the lathe bed. So I can happily say this new milling machine is performing really well with this roughing end mill, taking out big chunks of material. With the bulk of that material now removed, we can do our first real proper test fit and see how this fits onto the lathe. And as you can see there, there's still quite a big gap here, which I want to close down. So just setting this back up in the mill, I can come back along and do one final pass which will take out 
the last bit of material on this lower foot, let's say. Jumping over to the lathe now, and I want to get the threaded stud all done. So I've got to admit, I am cheating a little bit here. I've got an M8 bolt with a smooth shank on it, and I'm just going to use that, I think, for the threaded bolt. So I'm already measuring off the length I need, and here you can see me just parting this off. So, like I said, because this is a bolt, it's already threaded on one side, and the smooth shank of this bolt just means the only process I'm going to have to do on this now is just put a bit of a thread on the end. So, powering this in with the die, under power feed in the lathe, and we can get this little part knocked out pretty quick. Now is probably going to be a really good time then, just to check the clamping force on this, and make sure it's not going to go anywhere when clamped to the carriage. So you can see here, the threaded stud is now in place, and just got to find an adjustable spanner, or an actual spanner, and, oh, I think this will do. <coughs> That's tight. No, I'm only joking. Let's get a proper spanner for this. So, nipping that up now with a spanner, can actually come in and test how firm that's going to be. Yeah, checking on the DRO, that doesn't seem to budge at all when knocking into that with the carriage, so win-win. Realistically then, I could end this build right here and sum up this video, but to be honest, going through all the work that I've done, I want to make this tool feel just that bit more premium. So to do so, I'm actually going to replace just a standard nut and add a adjustable knob on here, which you can just tighten by hand. So to start with, you can see that I've just carved out the material here to give myself a blank. And then just coming back in now with the knurling tool to give this a real nice coarse knurl, which will help tighten this up by hand later on. Next thing to do then is to drill and tap this for the M8. And got to admit, this is one of my favourite things to do on the Harrison M300. It's just so easy drilling holes on this especially in a really soft material like this brass. And then just slowly power feeding the M8 tap in, making sure I'm using a spiral flute there just to extract all those chips. And finishing the last little bit off by hand. After completing the tapping then, the last thing left to do on the lathe was just to come back in and part this off ready to head over to the milling machine and give this thing a really nice feature. So you can see here I'm just setting up a bull nose end mill in the milling machine and just getting this thing set on centre line. Once we had the tool set up on centre line I could come back in with my square collet block and just machine in some features. So the plan is just to have this square collet block you know give the knob essentially four sides to it and just rotate that round. With the end now in sight, it was time to move on to the fine adjust feature that I'd wanted to fit to this carriage lathe stock. So to begin with, this involved drilling a very, very deep hole. So you can see here I'm using a five millimeter drill bit and drilling to pretty much the max capacity of the flutes there. And with that done, you can just run in with an M6 tap, and that's finished. So next was just to do the cross hole, and this was quite easy. Just came in with a small drill bit, and again, finished that off with a tap. Finally, the last little thing was just to machine out a recess on an M6 cap-headed bolt. So you'll see at the end how this all comes together, but this was me using my most smallest possible end mill that I could find. I think in the end it was a 2.5 millimeter end mill that I had in my collection. So that was ideal. With all the components now finished off for this carriage lathe stop, let's get this thing finally all assembled together and give you a run through of how all these small individual components work. So to begin with, 
I've got the dowel pins Loctited into the main body here. I don't really want them moving around, so they're Loctited in, not moving anywhere. Next, onto the sort of base foot. Again, this threaded stud here, that's Loctited into the base plate as well. And essentially these two pieces just marry up like so. Really nice sliding fit there. Really happy of how that turned out. And then we've just got the brass thumb screw, which threads onto here and tightens the whole thing down. So that bit I think is fairly obvious. The next bit, which I wanted to go into a little bit more detail in, is how the fine adjustment works. So I went with a six by one millimeter pitch threaded screw. And essentially every full turn of that is going to give me one millimeter either in or out. And then with this small M5 little stud, I've just turned the end of that down. So that locates into that recess there. So that's going to almost clamp it or lock it into position so it can only go either a full revolution at a time. So, ooh, before that rolls off, this simply just screws into there. Do it like there for now. And then this stud screws in here. So I can't see myself using this that often. So that's why I've made it recessed and also the fact that you need an Allen key to do that up. So again, not f like fully cranking down on this, just lightly nipping that up. And now that's not going to move anywhere. So that is the fully assembled part. And I've got a bit with the cold blue on there. The chamfers that I added off camera and the brass knob. Really happy of how this has turned out. Looks really slick. So that is the carriage stop. Hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And until the next one, have a good time guys and see you soon.